now. Make our weekly trip to Norfolk to chat with someone from the Tides. And normally we chat with a player, but after we saw the video on Saturday morning, I knew we needed to catch up. It's been a little bit too long since our last chat with the manager of the Norfolk Tides. He is Mr. Buck Britton, and he's with us now here on GCR. Buck, it's Glenn and Zach in Baltimore. It's good to chat as always, sir. Thank you for taking a couple of minutes for us. Yeah, no problem. Thanks for having me on. It's always good to catch up. I, all right, you know I got a lot I want to talk about with you, but of course we have to start with it. Tell me about how this goes. Like, when do you know that you get to deliver this news to Adley Rutschman? And like, what's the process to creating something like this to make sure it's on video? The guys know. What does this look like on a Friday night? Yeah, so um, it started with Mike Elias sending me a text message not to play Adley. So. Um, we knew that his call up was close. We didn't know exactly when, but I, I kind of felt like, all right, this is the moment to tell me not to play him. We, um, we go through our game and at the end of the game, Mike's, Mike's got a text message waiting for me. Like, Hey, we're going to do this after the Oriole game. And if you remember that game took 14 innings. Right. <laughs> so, so my job was to keep Adley Rutschman at the ballpark <laughs> an hour and a half after the game for the Oriole game to finish without tipping him off. <laughs> I mean, okay, but hang, he's got to be suspect, right? Like, you know, the only the only saving grace is I kind of set it up uh, during the game because I anticipated this. I told him, "Hey, you're not playing today. You caught three games in a row. Like, let's just make sure we we take care of you here. I don't want to burn you out. Uh, so take a day today, but be ready to come off the bench if we need a big hit." So I, I kind of set it up like that during the game in anticipation that this moment was coming. Oh man. Oh, so all right. So you get in there. Did, did you sense that he knew? Like, that's the thing that I can't quite read in the video, right? Because I feel like yeah. knowing who he is, if you get called into the room, you got to at least be thinking that's what's going on, right? Like, did you what, what sense did you have as it was unfolding? Yeah, so I, I thought for sure that he might have, might have a clue, but luckily Nick Vespi came into that game and threw the last two innings. So we had a bunch of people there, you know, watching Vespi pitch, and Adley was one of them. So I kind of felt like, all right, I got, I still got a chance to pull this off. I had my strength coach run in, like run into him, make a collision in the locker room as he was walking out, and go, "Oh man, you're still here." Buck was wanting to talk to you. I want to pop in there just to see if that's pretty good. Maybe he wants to talk to you tonight. Um, and then that's how the video starts. I don't know if you saw that towel around my neck. That was because I was sweating um, <laughs> for the buildup because you, you get one time to call Adley Rutschman up for the first time, uh, and it was a lot of nerves going on. What does it mean to you, Buck? I mean, like, look, you know, you, you have done so many things in this game as a player and now as a skipper, and, of course, we know your family has accomplished so many things in this game. But, like, what does this mean to you that you will kind of always be tied to this moment? Like, this video will always exist. And if Adley Rutschman is the player a lot of us think he is, like, you got to be that guy that gave him the news. What does that mean? I know you got to go out and play another baseball game the next day, but, like, big picture, what does that mean to you? Yeah, it's, uh, you know, really it's uh, for, for a coach, it's it's kind of a dream to send anybody to the big leagues, um, let alone a guy who, um, number one, is a human being like Adley Rutschman is, but the type of player he is and the expectations. Um, to be tied to him is incredible. I know that, you know, I've had conversations with him the last couple of days. It's something that we'll both remember forever. Um, you know, I joke around, and hopefully when that bronze statue is getting put out in front of the in front of the uh, Camden Yards, I'll be there mm. uh, with that towel around my neck uh, to help him <laughs> celebrate it. You but, kept, uh, no, you, wait, it, wait, wait. I mean, wait, wait. Let's clarify. You you kept the towel, of course. Oh, of course. Yeah, yeah. Of you course. Got, there you there got might it. have been some some sweat uh, some sweat swap there that I'm going to hold on to. <laughs> uh, but no, seriously, like you know, I, I remember the day my brother got called up. I was fortunate enough to be in Florida at the time because he didn't make the team out of spring training. And then he ended up pitching the fourth game of the season. So I know how special that moment was for him. Um, so I kind of had an idea of what that meant to Adley. And, it, you know, it was, it was super special for me as well. That's awesome. That is so awesome. Buck Britton is with us as we make our trip down to Norfolk to chat with the Tides. If you are headed down that way, maybe to Virginia Beach this weekend, I would definitely encourage you to squeeze in a stopover to see the Norfolk Tides. They are home this week and next. and includes uh, MLB Network Koozie giveaway on Saturday night. You can find out more by going to NorfolkTides.com and get your tickets for these coming weeks. But before we move on to the guys that are still there, just just give me, Buck, what, what is the best thing that you've learned in all the time that you've been around Adley, all the conversations with him? 
What's the thing that maybe somehow you still don't know if people fully understand about him as a player, as a person, whatever it is? Yeah, I, I think, number one, how hard of a worker this guy is. Um, you know, after he got called up, conversations were, how, you know, how are we going to manage this guy's workload in the big leagues? Because, I mean, this guy, this guy works extremely hard. He's the first one in the cage um, every day doing his catching stuff. I mean, it's every day nonstop for this guy. Uh, but also, like, the genuine love he has for his teammates. You, you see him when pitchers record the final out of an inning and he's running yeah. to the mound. Yeah. You know, like it's not it's not fake. It's just he's done that every time he's caught, and it's just Adley. He he loves his teammates. He wants everybody else to succeed around him, and he loves having fun on the field. I mean, he's always smiling as you guys get to see. And then in those big moments, man, he he locks down, he bears down, and you see the elite talent. Yeah, it's incredible. It's incredible, and we can't wait. Uh, the, the idea. Hopefully, we're going to see about 15 years of it uh, here in Baltimore, Buck Britain. That's what we're rooting for. Um, all right, let's talk about some of the guys that are still there and people that, that fo- fans can get down to see. And I'm I'm going to lead the conversation off, of course, with Grayson. And and let me ask it this way: We all know, we all see how dominant he's been um, and how awesome he's been against this AAA level. But you know, it was I was reminded this week that he's also never pitched more than a hundred innings in his professional career, right? And he wasn't a college pitcher. H- how do you guys handle like the he's he's just firing away? He's been so good, but you know, it's probably a bit of a reach to think that he can do this every fifth day for an entire season, or that that's a good way to go about progressing. What are those conversations like, and how do you measure the fact that my God, you just want to bottle up what it is that he's doing right now? Yeah, no, he's been he's been doing a really nice job. You know, I think there's still things that go on uh, during the game that he has to navigate through, whether it's uh, you know an eight pitch at bat where he doesn't necessarily have something um, that's going to get the guy out at the plate. How does he navigate? How does he stay engaged in that at bat? Not give away at that at bat and end up walking a guy. Um, he's he's had opportunities to pitch around traffic, but when you see him locked in, the, the stuff is elite. It doesn't matter who's up there. It's swing and miss stuff. It's just how do we stay consistent with that? Because we know that even these best hitters in the minor leagues are going to go up to the big leagues and hit hit seventh, unless your Adley's going to hit sixth, right? Like yeah. these aren't the the best of the best. So how do we continue to stay focused on pounding the strike zone down here um, and not giving away those free passes or taking a pitch off? Um, and then obviously the buildup for the guy. I mean, it's, I think he's getting to the point now where he's going to be able to throw seven innings. So I'll be excited to see him kind of navigate the lineup possibly a third time around. Um, so there's still a lot of little things that he's working on. But he's, I mean, that's it's incredible competitor, incredible stuff. Uh, do you feel like, you know, it, 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 do, you, do you have to at some point, is there a con- do you have to skip him at some point through, like, the rotation? Do you have to try to limit the innings? Or is it just, hey, let's go, we'll deal with that later? I think I think the organization has done a really nice job of building out a plan for him. I mean, he hasn't thrown more than what, six innings this year. Yeah. Um, you know, he had a slow build up at the beginning, was throwing four, then five, and now six. So I think they've they got a plan mapped out to keep this guy going. I think uh, over the course of the full season. Um, I don't know what that looks like at the back half. I mean, the, I think the expectation is that he's pitching, you know, higher stress innings in the big leagues. So. Um, but the organization has a has a plan for that, and we kind of just abide by the, the guidelines that we're given. Um, we're talking with Buck Britton, manager of the Norfolk Tides, here on Glenn Clark Radio. Uh, Buck, I'll come back to pitching in a second. I want to talk about uh, Bobby Newstrom, right? Like, what yeah. what is this dude eating? And do, how do you have everybody else eat the exact same thing so that they can muscle the ball the way that he does? Yeah, Noose has done a great job. Um, Kyle made a swing change last year in Bowie. Um, when if you looked at the scoreboard, you wouldn't think that a swing change was needed, but he realized that, you know, his ground ball rates were sky high. Um, he needed to get the ball in the air. So he made a swing change with Ryan Fuller and he's kind of just taken off since then. Um, strong kid, uh, doing a much better job, um, being able to slug against left-handed pitching. Um, but this guy is another guy that I, I, I think there was a lot of common personality traits amongst these players. And Adley was kind of the, the leader of that where these guys work extremely hard, man. And they, they take what they're doing super serious. Um, and they're getting results on the field. And Newstrom, Newstrom's been, Newstrom's been awesome for us. What happened? Can, can you explain the Kyle Stowers story, right? Because, mm-hmm. you know, I feel like it was only about a week ago that we we're like, well, you know, maybe it doesn't look so great for Kyle. He hasn't been hitting the ball. So all of a sudden, 
He's hitting everything. Can you can you explain to us kind of what happened over the course of the, the – is it just as simple as, hey, this is baseball, and sometimes guys just have a couple of weeks that don't go their way? I, I think that's, that has a little bit to do with it, but I also think that the hitting coach down here, Tim Gibbons, has done a really nice job of staying with the process for Kyle Stowers. We all know there's some swing and miss at the top of the strike zone. Um, they've been attacking that in the batting cage. Stowers has been showing up every day to, to work on not only keep his strengths of strengths, but really attack his weaknesses. And I, I think you're starting to see that work that he was putting in. It wasn't going to show up overnight, but he continues to grind at it, and it's starting to show up. And um, he's starting to have a little more success in those areas that he struggled, um, but maintaining his um, – his ability to, to square up the baseball. And when you leave this pitch down in the zone of this kid, I mean, he's, it is loud contact and it goes a long ways. Uh, I mean, it's, it's been clear. It seems like he's been hitting a home run every time up of late. Um, let me go back to the pitching. I, I know the last start was not great for DL. Um, mm-hmm. what, what, what happened in that start? And, you know, what are the priorities for him? Is obviously we, we all know the talent is there. Um, we just haven't, unlike Grayson, we haven't seen it go, you know, he hasn't pitched the same number of innings. And, you know, there has been a little bit of, in his tra- trajectory to this point, both injury issues and, you know, sometimes erratic control. Yeah, I think that's the biggest thing for DL. I mean, the stuff is electric, um, but you, you got to pound the strike zone. And as you, as you climb through the minor leagues, the hitters get better, they have a better understanding of the strike zone. Um, and, I, and I think it's just a matter of trusting your stuff working through the zone, you know, um, whether you give up a home run, whether you give up a double, just continuing to believe that your stuff is elite and attacking hitters. You know, we, we fall behind 2-0, 3-1. These hitters aren't afraid of 100 miles an hour. If they know it's going to be over the middle of the plate, they're going to get barrel on it. So it's pounding the strike zone, getting strike one, and then elite, letting the elite stuff finish hitters off and this is another guy when and I and I think he's close um he just got to us he's made right. three starts I believe um you see the confidence beginning to to uh to rise up a little bit so I'm I'm really excited to see him his next couple times out but the fastball's been electric 100 miles an hour uh this the slider he's working on getting a little more uh sweep to it so it, he's I think he's in a good place. We just got to get him attacking the zone at all times. Buck, you know probably as well as anyone about you know how this has changed with the Orioles and how development. I mean, you you've been at multiple levels. You are certainly very tied to this system. I, is there a guy that you would say this is the guy that I think is the story of of the Orioles and the way we've changed the development system here? And when you see this guy and where he is at this point, you can get a sense for what the Orioles development system is now is there someone that jumps out most to you um I honestly like you know Stowers for me has been really good but I think we touched on this guy Newstrom especially offensively um this was a guy that that didn't I mean if you look at his when he first got drafted um how he took his ABs and what his swing looked like it's a completely different man um and just over this really a full year now I think the swing change came about this time last year in Bowie um, and you're starting to see a lot of success. Now, there's a lot of God-given ability with Newstrom as well. I mean, this is a strong kid, um, and all he needed to do was learn to lift the ball in the air. But I, I think with all the technology and all the data we're giving and how we're siphoning that stuff to the players and trying to develop plans for, for that individual player, you're starting to see guys kind of take off. And for me, I think Newstrom is kind of embodies that right now. Um, but you're also seeing Stowers make adjustments. Uh, I mean, you're, you're going to see him a completely different hitter, I think, uh, when he's when he's in the big leagues and he, and he is now with his ability to cover more pitches in the strike zone. We can't wait. We can't wait. I'm, I'm, I'm sure. Imagine you would say, "Hey, we can wait. We can wait a little, yeah, little right. yeah. while." But uh, yeah. obviously, up here, we can't wait at all. Uh, again, Norfolk Tides home this week and next week. V- great opportunity for you over the holiday to get down see the tides, uh, see some of these pictures that we are raving about in person, and uh, go get to the beach while you're down there. It would be a great, great way to spend your time. Get your tickets, NorfolkTides.com. Buck Britton, it's always a pleasure, my friend. Greatly appreciate taking some time for us this morning. This is It was a really cool thing to see and a special moment that you got to share with Adley Rutschman. And 
you know, uh, maybe one day that, that towel will be worth like a billion dollars and, and you can fund uh, your great, 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 great grandkids um, college by, by, by putting it up on eBay or something like that. <laughs> Thank you for doing this this morning, my friend. I appreciate you guys. Thank you.